Good morning, friends. Nicodemus here. But remember, you can call me Nick. Theo and I landed in Tel Aviv and drove to the old city of Jerusalem. We're here on this epic road trip discovering who the Holy Spirit is. And Maggie wanted us to come all the way to Jerusalem to trace the steps of Jesus' disciples when they discovered who the Holy Spirit was in their lives. We're staying here at the Harmony Hotel in Jerusalem for two weeks. I need to FaceTime Maggie and thank her for making all these arrangements for us. Theo though, he's still asleep. I'll get him up soon. But first, let's see what Maggie thinks we should learn this time around. Hey Maggie. Hi Nick, how's your trip going? Very long and lots of waiting, but we managed to make the best of it. And we even got to meet the pilot. That was great. And he also taught us how important waiting is. It makes space for meaningful preparation. The disciples, they spent 10 days waiting and praying for the gift that Jesus promised to send them, the Holy Spirit. Well, great things happen when we pray, Nick. And that Bible story is proof of that for sure. Yeah, now I'm reading chapter two of the book of Acts and it's wild. It is. That's when the Holy Spirit comes and baptizes the believers. You're not talking about water baptism, but Holy Spirit baptism, right? I remember the Bible story you sent, but can you explain it a little more? Well, Nick, baptism in water is for sure a thing. Even Jesus was baptized in water. Remember John the Baptist dunked Jesus in the Jordan River just before he started his ministry on earth? Here, it's right here in the book of Matthew, chapter three, verses 13 to 17. And you know what, Nick? Believers today still practice water baptism. When a person is baptized in water, they're declaring that they'll serve Jesus with their whole life. It's a symbol of how Jesus has changed us, and we want the world to know that too. That's so cool, Maggie. Where are you going to send us today? I'm going to do some research, Nick, but I would love to send you and Theo to the upper room, where the disciples had their 10-day prayer meeting. I wonder if historians even know where it was. Hmm, maybe I should call Agnes Anderson. Agnes? Wow. Yeah, she helped me discover that Jesus is the greatest king that ever lived because he still lives. Yep. Agnes is a wealth of information. Well, Nick, you better get Theo out of bed and I'll send you what I have from Abby and Jeremiah, our Bible teachers. They've really been diving in. Well, Theo, here we are, waiting to go to the upper room, or what historians believe to be the upper room. Can you believe it? We're gonna see where the 120 followers of Jesus were baptized, not in water, but in the Holy Spirit. I know, I've been doing some research on the upper room. Did you know, Nick, that the upper room is also called the Cenacle? And now we're heading to the Mount Zion Gate, just outside the old city walls. Not only is this the place that the disciples held their 10 day prayer meeting, but it is widely believed to be the site of the Last Supper, the final meal Jesus had with his disciples before he was arrested and sentenced to die on the cross. But so much of Jerusalem was destroyed, so the site might not exactly be the upper room. That is correct, but according to tradition and to what Bible scholars are trying to make sense of in the geography of the Bible, they believe that this address that Maggie sent us is the upper room. I'm so excited. What a great idea Maggie had to send us 10,477 kilometers just to see for ourselves. Being here is a great way to learn. Hey, let's take a look at that Bible story Maggie sent us. Great idea, here it is, Theo. Oh, hey, I was just trying to put myself in the story. You mean the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit? Yes. You remember how Jesus told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem, right? And they started praying together? I do remember. And I also remember that they waited for 10 days. Jesus was with them for 40 days, plus 10 days of waiting. So that's 50 days total. Right. So 50 days following the Feast of Passover, that's what was happening when Jesus died and rose again. And now it's another feast day called Pentecost. Jerusalem was filled with people celebrating the spring harvest. On Pentecost then, something exciting happened. And that's what I'm trying to get a feel for here. 
Okay, I'm reading from Acts 2, starting from verse 1. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Wow! Remember, Abby, Jesus told them they would be baptized, immersed, dunked, fully covered. And now, here it says, they were filled. This happened all around, but also within them too. Look, they heard this sound. They saw flames sitting on everyone's head like they were all living candles. And then each began to speak in other languages, all because of the Holy Spirit. God really rocked their world, didn't he? The Holy Spirit arrived with style, and the book of Acts made sure that we'd never forget the Holy Spirit is here to stay. Exactly, but there's more. Remember, it's a feast day, and people are cramming the streets celebrating, and the noisy wind flames and the 120 people gathered all speaking in different languages has started to create a scene. Travelers from all over heard men and women speaking their own language. Somebody needed to explain what was going on. Oh my, it must have looked pretty crazy. The people thought they were drunk on wine, but then yes, the disciple Peter stands up and begins to explain to them what's happening. He tells them Jesus is the Messiah and Savior, and that the Holy Spirit, who was promised by the Old Testament prophets, has come. Keep reading, Abby. It's not just that Peter explained what was happening, it's that they responded. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 people made decisions to follow Jesus that day. 3,000, and they received the Holy Spirit too. Peter made it clear, the Holy Spirit is for everyone. Then, correct me if I'm wrong, this shows that the Holy Spirit made Peter's testimony powerful. Wasn't he the guy that often blurted out things? His words didn't change people's minds when Jesus was alive. But on this day, wow, his words became powerful. Exactly. We need to remember that the Holy Spirit doesn't baptize us to make us different or strange. He baptizes us to make a difference for God's kingdom. So people will come to know Jesus. The Holy Spirit's big entrance included wind and fire, but in us now, the Holy Spirit takes our small gifts and our simple words and makes them powerful for God's kingdom work. Jeremiah, let me hear that wind sound again. Let's both imagine that we're a part of that amazing day. I'll light the candle. I'm beginning to understand why the Holy Spirit came to baptize us. Wow. Between Abby and Jeremiah's story and actually seeing the upper room for myself, it feels so real. So real that I've got goosebumps. Goosebumps? Yeah, goosebumps. Why do you get goosebumps? Well, goosebumps are the result of tiny muscles flexing in the skin, making hair follicles rise up a bit. This causes hairs to stand up. Goosebumps are an involuntary reaction. Nerves from the sympathetic nervous system, the nerves that control the fight or flight response. They control these skin muscles, so it's an involuntary response to hormone surges caused by changes in temperature or emotion. Oh, the upper room must have given you a strong emotion, Nick. Yeah, what you just said. I guess I did have a strong emotion. I can now imagine being in that room with all those people, hearing the sound of wind, seeing what looked like fire on their heads and speaking a different language other than English. And you know what other strong response I have now, Nick? What's that? 
hungry. I'm so hungry. Let's go to this restaurant for lunch. Done. Hey. Hey, that looks like Chef Antonio inside that restaurant. What's he doing here? Who's Chef Antonio? Jesus said, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14, verse 26. Say it with me, friends. Jesus said, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14, verse 26. My friend Theo and I are here in Jerusalem to discover who the Holy Spirit is. Oh, ciao, ciao, Theo. Nice to meet you. What a wonderful idea. I mean, the Holy Spirit is my friend too, huh? Chef Antonio, what are you doing in the Holy Land? Ah, uh, Nicholas, I have been touring the world to learn about delicious foods and how to prepare them from other cultures. More than just Italiano culture. You know, cult Italiano culture is my favorite. Yes, yes, but ooh la la, there are some beautiful things to learn about the food and other cultures. So here I am in Jerusalem today with all of these beautiful ingredients, eh? And I am going to make Jewish desserts. Can we help? <gasps> Absolutely, Ma! Tell me, boys, where have you been today? Well, Chef, we just returned from the upper room where 120 believers were filled with the Holy Spirit and many came to know who Jesus was that day. Yes, I remember the story from the day of Pentecost. And you know what, boys? I am learning to make a bellissimo dessert today called the Blinces. They are traditionally served at the Feast of a Weeks, huh? Which, my friends, is the Feast a Pentecost, eh? 50 days after Jesus arose again, because Pente means a 50. That's what it means. And it was the day that the believers were filled with the Holy Spirit. Amazing timing. I would have said that the Holy Spirit set up this divine appointment between us here today. You see this thin crepe right here? It is cooked so nice, has like a brown toasty lines, and it, it and it when you use it, you get to fill it up with some beautiful just feelings. There's some ricotta cheese here, or oh, ricotta cheese, right? And then there is some butters and some a vanilla extract, kind of my favorite, and some egg yolk, and then sugar, and then you dollop it in the crepe, and you roll it up, and then you take it, and you put it on the frying pan, and it sizzles in the bottom, oh, and it's extraordinary. But here's where it gets a really good, see, on the inside, my friends, is what makes it extraordinary. The taste is so powerful, huh? Just when the Holy Spirit feels a person, powerful. So what you're saying is once it's filled, it has a bolder flavor? Yes, Nick, it has a much bolder flavor. So would you say it was baptized in flavor? Oh, yes, yes. I see where you are going, yes. Oh, you know what? It's kind of like this pickle here, too. This pickle used to be a cucumber. <gasps> that is right! And then when someone added salt, vinegar, sugar, water, and spices to the cucumbers and heated all of that up to a boiling point and canned them all up in these glass jars, they got baptized. They got pickled and they will never ever be the same again. Oh, Nick, this one here, that's Maru one, eh? Oh yeah, he's actually a genius. Wow, oh, Theo, the Holy Spirit is giving you exceptional gifts, huh? You're exactly all right. The cucumbers are baptized with all the good stuff, right? It makes them pickles never to be cucumbers again. And being baptized in the Holy Spirit changes us forever too. You can't, you can't necessarily see the change, but you can feel it, you experience it. 
And then we have the power of the Holy Spirit living within us. That power gives us the boldness to witness. I know I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> but Chef Antonio, I also want to be filled with one of these blintzies. Can we try? 100% Nicholas. Here you go. You know you'll never come to see me without being filled up. <laughs> and it's the same with the Holy Spirit. When you take the time to pray and spend time with him every day, you get filled up too. We have to take a seat at table number seven. Wow, what a day it's been. And hey, look, Theo, Maggie sent us another link to what the Holy Spirit is doing in other places in the world. Let's show Chef Antonio. It's amazing. Welcome back to Live with Elvis and Ali. I'm Ali. And I'm Elvis. Friends, we can't sing, we can't dance, and we can't act, but boy, can we talk. And speaking of talking, Elvis, can you speak any other languages? Mm -mm. Well, actually, Ali, yes, I can. I speak two Nigerian languages, Igbo and also Pidgin. I was born in Port Harcourt in Nigeria, which kind of explains my outfit here. And people there speak over 300 languages, and English is, just happens to be the official language. Uh, I also speak a little bit of Japanese, and I love anime, so that's why I learned that, and I just love the Japanese culture. That is so cool. Well, I grew up speaking French, so I speak that as easily as I speak English, but I'm trying to learn Norwegian. Hi, what is that, dude? Norwegian? Why? Yes. God created all these people in the world, and they speak all sorts of different languages, and I just want to learn a few. Hey, maybe you could teach me something in Igbo. Ooh, that would be fun. Okay, say, Kedu Ihe Oza. Kedu Ihe Oza. That means, guess what's next? Oh, well, okay then. Kedu Ihe Oza. Friends, today on Where in the World is the Holy Spirit, we're talking about Bible translation. God knows all our languages. He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. But the Bible is our number one source of information to know God's will for our lives. That's really important, Allie. I want to read the Bible in a language I spoke every day. Where is the Bible translation needed? That's just it, Elvis. It's not just in a few places or with a few people. There are thousands of languages to be translated and millions of people who need God's word. It's a big and important job that the Holy Spirit is doing. I cannot wait to hear about it, Allie. We have something for our friends to watch from our satellite feed, right? We sure do. Or in French, I'd say, bien sûr. Since Canada is a bilingual country, we can read almost anything in French and English, even our Bibles. But did you know that the Bible wasn't originally written in English or French? The Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament in Greek. This means that the Bible was translated for us. Translated means to change the words from one language into another. It sounds simple, but the process takes time and special training. Wycliffe Bible translators are gifted to contribute to this important work. There are 7,378 different languages in the world, and the Bible has been translated, at least in some part, into 3,495 of those languages. This means there are still many languages and millions of people who do not yet have God's Word written and available in their heart language. God's Word, the Bible, contains the good news of Jesus, and without it, the story of Jesus is way more difficult to share. So, the Holy Spirit calls people who love studying languages to help make translations possible. They partner with local churches, individual Christians, and also people who don't yet know Jesus, but are experts in their own language, so that the right words are chosen to communicate God's Word. When people can read about Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, his death on the cross, and that he rose again to life in their own language, their lives are changed. A UPIC pastor from Alaska said, when I read the Bible in our own language, the verses are blown up like with a magnifying glass. And people from Mamende, Brazil, wondered after hearing the story of Jesus, why their grandparents had never been told this important news. In the Philippines, a father was chosen to read the New Testament for a recording. When he finished, he said yes to Jesus and immediately told his daughter about Jesus too. God's word is precious and powerful because it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. How is God inspiring you to share his words with others? Can you memorize one verse this week and tell a friend about it? That's one way to do translation work too. And don't forget to pray for everyone who's working to make the Bible alive in every language of the world. 
at your account guru the bible verses naisim what did you say You're going to need to translate that for me. Oh, sorry. I said I need to memorize some Bible verses, probably in English, but maybe I should do both. Or all three, you never know. Ambitious. Well, you know what else is fun, Elvis? What, Ali? Getting to know kids who are new to Canada. It's hard when you can't speak the language and you need to practice talking. There's so much to learn, but it's fun if you're learning it with friends. Yeah, and that's another way our friends can allow the Holy Spirit to work through them. Isn't it, Ali? Because There's the message, God's word, and then there's a messenger. All of us, we are all the Bible translators. That's right. And that's our show for today. Until we meet again, friends, let the Holy Spirit inspire you to pray and give and go. Hi friends. What a day it's been for Nick and Theo on their road trip to discover who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a baptizer. Seems like a weird story. People speaking in different languages that they'd never spoken before. Does that make you a little nervous? A little scared or hesitant? Acts 2:4 says, "They were all filled with the Holy Spirit." Then they began to speak in other languages which the Holy Spirit made them able to speak. Remember what our Bible explorers were talking about? We need to remember that the Holy Spirit baptizes us not to make us different or strange, but to help us make a difference for God's kingdom. So people will come to know Jesus, to give us boldness, to give us a language that helps us to pray to the Holy Spirit every day. The Holy Spirit's big entrance included wind and fire, but in us and in all of you, the Holy Spirit takes our small gifts and our simple words and makes them powerful for God's kingdom work. That day Peter was changed. He always loved Jesus. But that day, the Holy Spirit filled him to the point that he had the boldness to speak the truth about Jesus, and many came to know Jesus. So let's take a step of faith. Right where you are. Let's stand together and sing about the Holy Spirit. I want you to praise Jesus just like the disciples did in that upper room. I want you to pray that God will fill you with his Holy Spirit.
of the sweetest of loves But when my heart becomes free And my shame is to be